Hi Art Attack Zoomers, it's Chris Van Hillo here and today is week one of working on our spirit flags. So what I'm going to do today is show you three techniques. The first technique is um, applique. What we're going to do is we're going to trace our hand and then we're going to put that on background fabric. So if you're not working in fabric, you could also do this with paper. I'm concentrating on fabric right now. So there's four ways that we can, we can get our hand onto our background fabric. Um, the first way we're going to talk about is machine applique. So basically what I've done is I have traced around my hand, cut it out with a pair of scissors, and then using a tight zigzag stitch, machine applique this on to a background fabric. By the way, this is my ring. Sarah made me a silicone mold and then I cast it in resin, sprayed it with a metallic spray paint and it wouldn't be my hand without my ring, right? Everybody knows that. So, okay, and then this is what the back looks like. So I just did a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. So this is called machine applique. You can also do hand applique, which we're going to go over. We're going to go over needle turn applique, which, by the way, you get extra credit if you do that one. And the fourth technique we're going to use is what I call magical applique. Magical applique is when you use a fusible interfacing to uh, adhere your hand onto the background fabric. So this uh, is a fusible interfacing and it has paper on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel the paper off of one side, we're going to put it down on our fabric, we're going to press it on, and then we're going to take the protective piece off the back side, put that down to our background, and then we'll press that on. So we will stand at the iron and do that together. Um, there will be a handout for today's class, and so I will have a vendor's uh, product on there so you'll know where to get these. So we're going to go over the four techniques of applique. This is going to be my background fabric. I just think this is fun. And then uh, this will be my hand. And what I've done, as you saw, is I, I drew my hand on the fusible interfacing protective paper. So we're just going to position this where we want it and then we're going to, there's two protective sides. So I'm going to pull the paper off of one side. You can see that and you'll be able to feel it. You know, it's, it's sticky. You'll be able to feel it. So I'm just going to pull the protective sheet off. Bye bye hand. Okay. And then I'm going to lay that down against the fabric. Now you'll notice that I cut the fusible interfacing smaller than the fabric so that when I iron this I'm not going to get it all over my nice ironing board cover. You can also use, this will be in the handout, but you can also use a Teflon sheet under you to prevent that, but cut your uh, fusible interfacing smaller you won't have to worry. I have my iron set to a cotton setting and I'm just, no steam, because steam's not going to go through the paper. We're going to count to ten. One, two... Okay, really I'm kind of silly, because <laughs> I should have kept this one on, because we're going to cut around it. So that, I'm going to put my hand down, I'm going to trace it, then I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to lay that down on my background fabric. I've decided that the panels for my spirit flag are going to be seven inches across by nine inches long. So I just made a little piece of cardboard for myself because I cut a couple panels 
uh, exactly seven by nine and no 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 I want to cut them eight by twelve because I'm going to want to fold my sides over so that I can have perfect seam so as you can see here that's what I've done is I've left you know a fingers width on each side so that I can fold my sides under I can sold my uh, sew my fold my bottom under and then at the top I will be able to can you see the top mm -hmm. there you go at the top I'll be able to fold down almost two inches and that way I'll have a nice little sleeve that I can put through for my flag. So here is my finished size and the only reason I'm pulling that out right now is because I wanted to you know kind, kind of try to center my my hand or have my hand down a little bit. Okay so I'm thinking I'm just gonna put my pen right about there because that's where I want the bottom of my hand to be. Okay, now I'm just going to take off the backing that's on the other side, and if you can see, it's leaving that adhesive on the fabric. I apologize if I'm insulting anyone. I have no idea what skill level we're dealing with. I don't know if people have ever used this product before, so I'm sorry if, I, uh, if I'm being very rudimentary and, and insulting. I don't mean to be. Okay, so we're going to put the hand down and we're just going to try to get it straight try to center it. I got about two fingers from my thumb and I have about two fingers from here so I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little crooked at the bottom but I'm not really going to get too wigged out about that. Okay and then I'm just going to take my iron and I'm going to press this down. Now I see I have a little buckle here already so I'm just going to lift this up and just really make sure I don't have any uh, you know anywhere where it's folded or buckled. I'm going to take another piece of fabric and just put it down on top just in the event that some of that adhesive would would seep from underneath. This is interesting because I can actually see the um, the pattern coming through. Also I'd like to mention on on the hand that I did on the first one that I did, I had cut out a heart in the palm of my hand. So I had taken the hand and folded it in half and cut out the heart because I wanted to see the background fabric come through my hand and it just wasn't as spectacular as I thought it was going to be. So I went ahead and made a larger heart to put over that hole and then the heart that I had cut out, I put over that. And you know what? I kind of like that. So if you want to cut a symbol out here, you can or you can you know add ornamenture to the top of it. Okay, Ornamentation, maybe that's a better word. Accoutrements. Embellish. Okay, so again we're going to give it that 10 count. Whoops. Okay. Nice, nice and flat. You could take your sewing machine and zigzag around this outline. You can leave it just like this. It's completely up to you. If you're going to sew it down on your machine, you don't have to use the fusible interfacing. You could just pin the heck out of it, which is what I did on, on uh, the first one that I did. I just pinned it really well and I just sewed it down. And I got a little bit of puckering when I did that. I don't know if you can see, but I, I don't really care. But I got a little bit of puckering. So if you're really wanting it perfect, 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 flat, 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 I would absolutely recommend that you use the fusible interfacing. And look, I did it. I turned it over and so now it's my right hand. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is Magic Applique. You could also do machine applique over the edge. I'm not going to bore you with that because everybody knows if, you, if you're a sewer, you know how to do that. You can adjust your zigzag stitch to be uh, tight or you can have it be loose. I kind of played around. Here's a really loose one here. These are kind of loose. I originally did a loose zigzag stitch around my hand and then I went in and I did a tighter zigzag stitch. If you're a hand sewer, Oh, that's something completely different. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so here is your fusible interfacing, and this is also how you could do machine applique. For the hand applique technique, I'm going to trace my hand on the front side of the fabric using a Sharpie. 
Then I'm going to cut this out, but I'm not going to cut it out on the line. I'm going to cut it about uh, a quarter to a half of an inch larger than the line. So the line is actually what we are going to fold under and sew on. I've laid my hand down on top of my background fabric and I have a saber here. This isn't even a needle, this is a saber. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning this fabric under like this and I'm going to sew. So I'm just going to come in from underneath and I'm not going to knot this. I'm just going to, you know what, I want to start at the top. So. I'm not going to knot this. I'm going to leave a tail because in the end, this is just a basting stitch and I want to easily be able to pull this out. And if there's a knot, there's nothing easy about it. Okay, so I'm really just going to come up and down and do a basting stitch to hold this in place. So again, I'm going to fold my fabric to the line and then I'm just going to give it a stitch because I'll, I'm basing around my shape and then once I have pressed it I will pin it to the background and sew it on. So it doesn't look really nice right now but I'm going to show you how nice it's going to be in just a few minutes. So you can see the line. I'm just turning that under with my finger and then I'm just holding it down and catching that on the back, pulling it, turning it down. I'm on the back so I'm going to come back through to the front. And I am leaving really large area between my stitches. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to even make this look good. I'm not trying to make it tight. I'm just trying to hold the fabric down so that I can press it and pin it in place and then I can do a blind hem stitch around it. So I'm going to start working in to this curve. So I'm right about here. I'm on the top. And that actually would work really well. So I'm going to come to here Go in a little more, come to here. Okay. And then I'm just going to curve this under. Now, it might be helpful if you had a uh, toothpick or something in your hand to help that curve under. I think I was under, so I'm going to come up from behind. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep following that curve around. Now I'm going to be coming up from the back again, so I want to go ahead and curve this first. Okay. 
go ahead and curve this around. I'll take it right to there. And then curve that around. So I'm going to be coming up from behind. Oh, I pulled it out. Okay, so I'm right there. Don't pull it again. All right, make sure you got it on the fabric. I do. Let's pull that through. All right, so I'm just going to pull a little bit on here and tuck that under. So as you can see, I was at the back, so I'm going to come to the front. I accidentally let go of it. All right, hold that down. So I'm going to continue around and finish this hand, but I think I've adequately shown you. You just fold the line over, and then you're just going to baste that into place. Now this is a pretty complicated pattern to be basting. If you were just doing a circle or a square, I promise you it would be a lot easier. But you're just, you're folding on the drawn line and then you're just basting from back to front. And if you actually, if you pull it, don't pull too hard because you don't want to rip it, but if you pull it a little bit, it'll kind of lay down for you a little bit better. I just want to show you a little trick if you ever have trouble threading your needle. Uh, put a piece of white fabric or something behind you so you can actually see the eye of the needle to put the thread through. Some of the tools I like to use when I'm hand appliquing or even when I'm basting is a little uh, wooden stick or even a toothpick. I have a little spot right here that I just can't seem to fold under and if I take this toothpick I can kind of force that fabric under a little bit better. So I'm going to work on that. The other thing I wanted to point out is that I've got a couple of scratchy areas here right there when I sew this down to the fabric, I can go in with my thread and kind of fill in that area and correct some little mistakes that I might have there. This is one of the reasons that I really like needle turn applique, and that is when you glue your uh, fabric down and then you go in with a needle or a, a shish kebab skewer or a toothpick and you fold the fabric under and then press it. I mean, and then uh, stitch it. So it, that's that's uh, what we're gonna we're gonna go over that technique in a minute. I finished uh, basting around the hand, and so I'm from the back side. I'm just gonna go ahead and press some of these little guys down, and then I will turn it over and press it from the front. see a couple little problem areas here on the thumb but I think that I can correct those when I sew it down okay so once you get it nice and pressed everything is flat you're going to pin it to your background fabric so knowing that I'm going to be sewing a half of an inch around the edge I can put this down and I want about two fingers on each side and uh, that should work and I'm going to kind of you know keep it close to the bottom because I, I want to have my my words up here at the top uh, there's no great mystery to pinning so I uh, thought I didn't need to do that on camera I do like to try to put the pins away from me, like if I'm going to be holding in my hand, I stick myself all the time and I absolutely hate it. I can't really find a thread that's going to match the hand because the hand is in several different colors. So I've just found a very muted uh, green that will blend into the background. 
When I'm doing applique, I like to use sharps, which are just really good for applique. I'm gonna... One of the um, really important rules to uh, hand sewing applique is you, you don't want a really, really long piece of thread. So don't, don't cut a yard of thread, okay? So you want to try to keep it as short as possible. And then also, I want to show you this knot. I'm going to see if I can get this on camera. Um, this is my secret ninja knot that I just love. So I'm going to take my needle and hold it parallel with the floor. And then I'm going to take the end of my thread and I'm going to lay it down on top of the needle. And then I'm just going to hold it in place and I'm going to go around one, two, three times and then I'm going to pull that thread down between my thumb and my forefinger and then I'm just going to pull that all the way to the end and I have this perfect, perfect little knot. Okay. I'm going to come up through the bottom and I want to get as close to the edge as I possibly can. So can you see that? I mean I am just barely on there. And then I'm going to just pull until I hit that knot. Okay. Okay, so this is a uh, applique stitch. I think it's also known as a blind hem stitch. I'm going to come underneath my hand and then I'm going to come up as close to the edge as I possibly can. You see that? And then I'm just going to pull it up. And see, keep these cords out of your way, these threads out of your way, because sometimes they can... All right. Okay, so we're just going to do that again. We're going to go underneath the hand, hidden underneath the hand. You don't want to see the stitch. Bye, Sarah. See you tomorrow. And then we're going to just come up as close as we can. And I'm just going to do a couple more and then uh, we'll take a look at it. I do give it a little bit of a tug. I don't want to pull it so hard that it buckles, but I don't want it loose either. So I do give it a little bit of a tug. And I think if you look really closely, you will not see any of those stitches. Okay. I'm going to turn my corner. I'm just going to turn my fabric. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I like to work with like a piece of paper or something underneath me it, it, on this felt mat. My, uh, my needle might actually c catch the felt. So sometimes it's good if you work on your, on your cutting mat or, or, or a piece of paper. Because sometimes some people like to work with it flat like this and not in their hand. Okay. I kind of like to work with it in my hand, but. So you can see I'm just going underneath and then I'm coming up and catching it on the very, very edge. Because I know I'm not going to be wearing this, I'm actually making my, sti my stitch length a little longer than I might if I knew that this was, if this was actually going to be clothing. So I'm kind of, you know, let's see if we can turn it over and see. Whoops. I'm kind of making my stitches a little larger than I would if I was sewing clothing. So just keep that in mind. If you know that this is going to hang on the wall and it's not going to be laundered and it's not going to be pressed and there's not going to be a lot of wear and tear on it, 
then you can make your stitches a little bit larger. Um, you know, if it's like a baby quilt, something like that, you're going to want to keep them. You're going to want to keep them smaller. But for a wall hanging or for art like this, we can keep it, keep them relatively large. Except that being said, when you're going around these, um, your fingers, you want to catch all the points. So you don't want to make them so large that you're going to miss the tip of one of your fingers. Now, as you can see, there's some raw edge kind of showing. So I'm just going to kind of hold my finger down there and come up and hope that I can catch that in. Okay, and again, I've got this folded right here, so I'm just going to make sure that that's really folded down well, and that's not going to show. So, hand applique is, it's not a fast process by any means, but it's very satisfying if you like to hand stitch. It's very exacting. If you do a good job, you won't see any stitches. I really like the needle turn applique, and I am going to go over that one next. But I'm going to go ahead and sew this down, and then I will let you see what it looks like when I'm done. This is one of those areas that I wanted to show you where there's raw edge. Can you see that? So I'm just going to take this uh, wooden skewer and I'm just going to push that fabric under. And you can kind of twist the skewer to make sure you really get it pushed under there well. And then take your needle, and I'm getting very dangerously close to the end here. Take your needle and just try to come up and catch that and maybe give it an extra. Really make sure you push the needle under well. And I think I've taken care of that problem. Okay, so I wanted to show this to you guys. See right here where this is kind of squared off? I don't know, my fingers aren't square. My fingers are round. So I'm just going to take the um, tip of my needle and I'm just going to kind of catch that fabric and pinch it under like that. And then I'm going to sew that down so it can't come up. So I'll probably do an extra, an extra little uh, stitch right there, although I normally wouldn't. Because I really want to make sure that stays down. So see, uh, now instead of it being square there, it's, uh, it's rounded. So even after you have it basted down, you can correct some of uh, some minor mistakes with uh, the tip of your needle on your toothpick. Okay, I have sewed around my hand and now I'm going to take out my basting. So I'm just going to grab one of these tails and I'm going to pull and it broke and that's okay. I'm just going to keep pulling until it breaks and then I will figure out where, uh, where it broke. Okay, now I'm going to go down and do the same one to this. I'm just going to take this tail and I'm going to pull, okay, and all I want to do is remove the basting stitches. So sometimes as you're applique stitching around, you accidentally catch that, that thread, your basting stitch thread, you know, you'll go through it with your needle, and um, that, that's one reason why it, why it breaks. But see, that's why we don't want to knot it because it would uh, be harder to. All right, let me see if I can grab this guy and give it a yank. Nope. Nope. Not having any of it. Just hold on to it with a pin then. All right, that came out nice. Now I see right here that's a base stitch because there is no way I would have. That would have been an applique stitch. Perfect. All right, and so I've got a nice big tail here. Let's see where that takes me. All right, nice big tail here. Okay. Uh, 
all the basting stitches should now be out. I will take this to the ironing board and iron it, but you should not see any stitching. It looks like I gotta should have taken that corner in right there. And I can go in when I'm done and I can push a corner in with my uh, toothpick and I can hit it with a needle again. So anyway, this is hand applique.